Hi there. Over 200 years ago, Mercer County would have looked completely different. Before cars, before trucks, and even before trains, the main method of transportation was by canal boat. Connecting Lake Erie to the Beaver River, the Erie Extension Canal began construction in 1831. The Shenango Division, which was finished in 1844, connected Conneaut Lake to Pulaski and carved its way right through the heart of Mercer County. I'm standing outside the Erie Extension Canal Museum in Greenville, Pennsylvania, and former site of Lock Number 22. The lock is long gone, but this building houses some of the last remaining vestiges of the canal. Inside, you can see such things as a full-scale replica of a canal packet boat, various canal artifacts, and a model of a canal lock. Let's take a look inside. As civilization moved westward across the country, the canals played a pivotal role in facilitating this movement. At 14 feet wide and 80 feet long, the packet boats, which were pulled down the man-made canal by horses or mules, could transport materials, goods, or people hundreds of miles up and down western Pennsylvania. Most cities on the western side of Mercer County owe their early growth to the Erie Extension Canal. Outside of this museum, and the Mercer County Historical Society, it is hard to find any evidence of the canal. So today, I'm gonna to take you to a couple fairly unknown sites where you can still see the last remnants of the Erie Extension Canal. Come along. I'm in Sharpsville at lock number 10, the only remaining lock on the Erie Extension Canal. 137 locks were needed to overcome the elevation change of 977 feet between Lake Erie and the Beaver River. A lock was a way to connect two waterways with different elevations. This lock connected the Shenango River to the canal, a difference of seven feet. These massive stones lined the sides of the lock and two large wooden gates, which are no longer here, stood on either end. One gate would open, a boat would enter, the gate would close and the water levels would rise. The gate on the opposite end would then open to allow the boat to continue on. The process could be reversed for boats going in the other direction. The canal played a prominent role in bringing coal and ore to the furnaces of this town and many others like it. The lock is still visible in most old maps of Sharpsville. Wow, it really is a great piece of history, that lock. It's hard to understand just how big it is. The stones are absolutely massive. You can see some scratch marks on the lower stones where the packet boat would have bumped up against it. Really awesome. It's amazing that it's still around. When technology advanced and trains became more efficient, the canals were drained, filled in, and railroad tracks built in their place. The locks, having no more use, were torn down and repurposed. The stones were used for building foundations, bridges, and other construction. Mercer County towns like Sharpsville, Greenville, West Middlesex, and Sharon, that initially flourished thanks to the canal, owed their continued economic success to the railroads. Now, the railroad did not follow the exact path of the canal, which left miles of canal forgotten and untouched. Towns along this stretch were forgotten as well. I am on the Shenango Towpath Trail, about halfway between Greenville and the Shenango River Reservoir. You can see beside me, this is the abandoned canal right here. It's now a swampy sort of wetland area. I'm walking on the towpath. The towpath is where the mules would have trod and pulled the packet boat behind them. 
These boats usually carried coal, iron ore, and lumber, but records show they even carried such things as butter, stoves, oats, plaster, and salt. The reason this canal lies untouched is because after the canal was abandoned, this route was bypassed by the railroad. The three towns on this route that boomed during the canal's most active days started to diminish. New Hamburg, a tiny town of a few streets and dwellings, used to be booming with an iron furnace, several locks, a tin shop, grist mill, sawmill, hotel, and many other businesses. Absolutely nothing of Big Ben remains after it was completely deconstructed due to its proximity to the reservoir. But at one point, there were big plans for a bustling town, complete with two town squares, wide streets, and hundreds of lots. Clarksville, now known as Clark, a small town on the edge of the reservoir, at one time had a large public dock, a tannery, mills, warehouses, and an academy. Like Big Bend, Clarksville suffered greatly after the town was flooded as a result of the building of the Shenango Dam. Unfortunately, these three towns lived and died with the canal. I'm here back at the museum finishing up my day. What a day we had checking out some unknown stuff in Mercer County. Uh, hopefully you were as fascinated with this stuff as I am. Unfortunately, the canal came to a tragic end. The Elk Creek Aqueduct near Erie collapsed in 1872 and that basically shut off all the canal and it was never repaired and it just got replaced by the railroad technology advanced the railroad took over it was much more efficient and faster and all this stuff kind of just disappeared there are not people living anymore that have worked on the canal and so it's kind of disappearing from history a little bit so what i want you to do is come here to greenville and check out the museum or head to Mercer and go to the Mercer County Historical Society. Better yet, head to Sharpsville and check out lock number 10. Head to the Shenango Towpath Trail and take a hike. I'm Adam Stillwagon. I'm still going far. Please subscribe.